I do feel so strongly about you. You are the strongest, the most righteous generation of young adults that, that the world has ever known. And I love you for that. Elder Holland and I are so grateful that you keep your covenants and that you strive to do what's right. And because there's so many of you, you will have that power that Elder Holland spoke about. You, I see a light in this room and it's so bright. And it makes me think about this, when the Savior appeared in 3 Nephi. He said, hold up your light that it may shine unto the world. Behold, I am the light which ye shall hold up. Elder Holland and I are so honored to be with you and humbled to be with such strength and righteousness. And we've prayed that you might benefit from some of our experiences in an earlier time. Like you, we were young ones, but now we have grown old. As I look back at my life, and if I could leave, live any part of it over again, I would do one thing differently, very differently, simplify. It seems to me that everything is better when it is simplified. Our food, our clothing, our furnishings, and our schedules. What I regret most is that in my youth, I didn't see the simple beauty of the gospel. I even made the gospel too complex. I felt it was too overwhelming, too difficult, and sometimes too mysterious. It seems to me that even as a young adult, I had to climb a mountain of righteousness go through a fiery furnace of purification and unravel every doctrinal controversy known to mankind. I thought I had to do all of these things to be acceptable before God. But there again, I was making it too complicated. And needless to say, my thinking then was more than a little girl from Southern Utah felt she could tackle. It was, as someone once said, the reason people do not join with you Christians is because you, you wear your religion like a headache, like a crown of thorns. There is only one person who has had to bear that crown of thorns. And he did it so that we might live joyfully, abundantly, and peacefully, not despairingly. The gospel was never meant to be a mountain. That mountain, that little girl felt like she could climb. He wanted her and everyone else in the world to always be filled with hope. He wants us to know that the gospel is beautifully simple and simply beautiful. But please don't misunderstand me. In speaking of hope, I do not mean that Christ should give us a magical wand or a modern lightsaber. Our hope has to be more than Pinocchio's when you wish upon a star, if it is to be the kind of hope the Savior taught. But brothers and sisters, my young brothers and sisters, it is a gift to us and to the entire human family that we have been blessed with hope. And we should recognize it as a light shining in a very dark world. As one writer said, none are completely wretched except those who are living without hope. 
the sweet simplicity involved in discovering this gift of hope is that you don't have to search for it. You don't have to run around chasing after it. You don't and you can't manufacture it. Like so much in the realm of grace, you won't acquire it by leaning on your own strength or on that of another person. There are no secret formulas nor any magical mantras involved. It won't come from deep breathing exercises, valuable as they are, nor by reading another book on how to be happy. In fact, the part that we play in this gift that is given is so important, is so important that our Heavenly Father has us live. We just bring a small part to it. He has a larger portion of the task. Our part to come to Him in loneliness and simplicity. And then we should worry not and fear not. Why so simple? Because behind everything Christ taught in every scripture, story, and parable is the promise that with God all things are possible. The promise that God's power can wipe away every tear. We are to let go of personal desperation and seek rest in the Lord. So we come before Him with meekness and lowliness of heart to receive the blessings that come with His unceasing love. Our trust is to be like that of a little child or a little lamb, which actually we are in his grand flock. Our hearts will always be restless until they rest in God. This call to be meek and lowly of heart, one of the few descriptions the Lord gave about himself was that he was meek and lowly of heart. And it is a call to all of us as his disciples. If we can live this way, he says we will find rest to our souls and will discover that his yoke is easy, that his burden is light. I see this call to be meek and loneliness and lowly again and again as I read the scriptures. It's probably because I need it again and again. I'm sure that nothing of great spiritual consequence has ever been done by anyone who wasn't hopeful and humble. This kind of mindset is our hope for you tonight to have you learn this while you are still young. We want you to know with all of our hearts that God is your Father, that He has carried you from the womb, that He has plans for you, plans for a future with hope. Let me share with you two scriptures I love in the Old Testament that uses some of this very same language. Isaiah says, Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all of the house of Israel, which are born of me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. Even to your old age, and even when you turn gray, will I carry you. I have made, and I will bear. I will carry and I will deliver you. And Jeremiah writes, For surely I know the plans I have made for you, plans to have you to, to, for your welfare and not for your destruction, for your harm, to give you a future 
with hope. And then when you call upon me and pray to me, I will hear you. I testify to you, my young brothers and sisters, that this is a truth born of my own personal experience, that our Heavenly Father will do His part in fulfilling these promises. It is up to us to simply believe. Believe simply to be more childlike in our meekness and especially in our gratitude as we receive His gifts. Do you want a really wonderful year this year? Do you want a future filled with hope? Do you believe there are blessings in store for you? Have you seen enough of God's goodness to hope on and to reach up? The irony will be that this is done by kneeling down, by bowing, even perhaps by falling down at the feet of God. Such sweet simplicity, kneeling, bowing, falling at the throne of grace. Elder Holland indicated, indicated to you that we will find this precious gift of hope linked with two other gifts of God, that of faith and that of charity. Please do not do as I did when I was younger and make these virtues so huge and so complex that we feel despair trying to understand them. Cherish their simplicity. I offer you this one simple little sequence. Faith is the conviction that there is a God. Hope is trusting He will help us. And charity is His love working through us to bless others. I have learned regarding charity that none of us have the energy, the time, resources, or strength to do all that our hearts would like us to do. We cannot do it our, all. Our hearts do exceed our capacity. How wonderful it is that God's power moving through us can enlarge our, our modest impact can multiply our limited efforts and do for others that which we could never do alone. This simple approach to these three large doctrinal issues has blessed my life. I wish I could have seen them in this less intimidating way so much sooner. I firmly believe that God intended such gospel truths to be plain enough for even a child to understand. And I repeat it, faith is the conviction that there is a God. Hope is trusting that He will help us, and charity is His love working through us. While I speak of gifts from God, may I add one more gift that adds to our hope in this new year. Illuminating faith, hope, and charity is the unspeakable, unspeakably beautiful, and unspeakably simple gift of the light of Christ. This light so closely linked to hope is a gift given to every man, woman, and child who has ever been or will ever be born into mortality. It's embedded in our very natures. It is part of our very souls. One of my favorite scriptural passages includes this line. 
And the Spirit giveth light to every man that cometh into the world, and the Spirit enlighteneth every man through the world. This light, there are so many of you that if you hold up your light, as the Savior said, and shine it throughout the world, you will realize that you're holding up the Savior, as he said, I am the light which you should hold up. That very light is one of the fundamental reasons for hope in our lives. It is so encouraging, so exciting, and just so hopeful that there is something within us that not only tells us that there is a right way to get through life's complexity, but it also tells us that we will find that right way if we are meek and lowly of heart. As President Nelson said to the entire church just a week ago, the world needs the light of Christ. Jesus Christ, and the world desperately needs your beautiful light. My wonderful young friends, my most earnest prayer tonight, my hope is that you, all of you young adults all over the world, will receive this call as your personal ministry, that you will take the hope of which the Savior spoke, and carry it like a torch to those who feel the world is very dark and a very difficult place. Is there any way I can encourage you to see that the bearing of this light is to be your Latter-day ministry? Please, please understand this is the most important thing I feel like I have to say to you tonight. And my greatest fear is that I will not say it well enough for you really to believe me. You must bear this light in such a way that all the darkness in the world will never extinguish it. The simple but powerful approach to what are otherwise large and complex issues will change the trajectory of a falling, darkened world. Please have faith in God. Hope that he will help you and receive the charity that enables him to work through you to accomplish what only you can do. As you accept this challenge and begin this new year, after you have looked inward, I plead with you to look upward. The eyes that look down on yours will be those of a loving Father in heaven who can and will bestow upon you all those things you hope for in righteousness. You can't get these blessings by chasing them. Please stop running to the point of exhaustion. Be quiet. Be still. Simplify. Be meek and lowly of heart and pray. And I testify to you that miracles will come when we slow down, when we calm down, and when we kneel down. All that the Father has can one day be yours. What a truly, truly hopeful way to face your future. I love you very much. I admire you, and I will always pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.